In today's video, we're playing at Texas Double Deuce for the On Tilt Boys Meetup game, where we're all in multiple times against On Tilt Nick. The game was action-packed. I got crazy hands to report to you guys, so let's get right into it. We have another 2-5 game for $1,500. Now, something to make note of is the button straddle is on, and if you straddle on the button, you get ultimate last action. It's a huge advantage, and it's on pretty much the entire game. So, in this first game, we look down at Queen Jack offsuit. The low jack opens to 30 bucks, folds them in the big blind, I call, and so does the button straddle. So we're three ways to a flop, and it is a juicy one. It comes queen, 10, jack, two clubs, so we flop top two pair, but every draw you could possibly think of is out there. So. I check and the low jack continues for $30. The button just calls and there's no way we're calling. I raised to 150 bucks and I think that's a small mistake. I think you should probably be going closer to 175 to 225, but that's not what I did. And it results in the low jack calling and the button calling as well. So we need to fade pretty much every single card in the deck on this turn and we do. It's the biggest brick of all the bricks. It's the deuce of spades. And now it's time to size up. I bet 475 bucks, almost the size of the pot, hoping either one of them will jam or they'll both just fold so I can take down the pot here. The low jack pretty quickly folds and now the button is in the tank. It feels like a jam is coming, but that's not what happens. He folds and we're scooping in our first hand of the session. You know what we haven't picked up in about two vlogs? Pocket aces and we pick it up here in the low jack. There is a limp and action folds over to me. I open to 35 bucks, folds to the big blind. He calls, the limper calls and so does on tilt Nick on the button straddle. So we're going four ways to a flop. It comes 10 to four, seven, two clubs. This board smashes everyone else's range besides mine. So when action checks to me, I'm gonna bet big here. I bet $100, Nick calls, and now the small blind decides to go all in for $665. Under the gun player folds, and I snap call. If this guy flopped the set, then take my money, brother. It's yours, but there's no way I'm folding here. We even have the ace of clubs for the backdoor nut flush draw, so no chance I was ever folding. Nick folds on the button, and we are off to a run out. Heads up for a $1,500 pot. The turn comes the deuce of hearts. River, though, is the nine of clubs, and he shows king five of clubs for a rivered flush, and just like that, our aces get cracked. All right, it sucks getting your aces cracked, but at least we know the action is gonna be good tonight. In this hand, we look down at queen 10 of hearts, we're in under the gun, open to 15 bucks, it folds over to Nick and the low jack, and he three bets to $50, folds back to me, and I call. So we're heads up to a flop, it comes jack, six, four, two hearts, we got a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw to go with it. I check and Nick bets $25 and I have a feeling that we're gonna make a flush here. So I min raise to 50 bucks and then Nick min raises again to $100 and I have no clue what that signifies. So I just call, we're off to a turn, it sucks. It's the four of clubs, not the card we were looking for. So I check and Nick bets 75 bucks. Pretty good price to continue here. So I just call, we're off to a river where we make a flush. It's the four of hearts. So that sucks even more because now any pair makes a boat. I check, hoping Nick will check it back, but we all know that's not gonna happen. Instead, Nick bets $600 in against anyone else. I would literally just snap fold because it's always a jack here or maybe even a four, but it's Nick. And I just have so many memories of him showing me six high when I decide to make a lay down. But is this really the best spot to be hero calling? I don't think so, but I feel like he's bluffing. I'm going with my gut. I call and here's what happens. Slow roll me, slow roll me. Slow roll me. No, you're good. Show it, show it, show it, show it, show it, show it. That's good. That's good. That is the amazing So we're on tilt now, that's for sure. And in this hand, we look down at pocket nines in the low jack. There's one limp and it folds to me. I open to 30 bucks, folds back to the limper. He calls, but now it's Nick's turn to act on the button strato and he does not call. Instead, he three bets to 150 bucks. I have $337 in my stack, which means I'm all in and I completely forgot that there's another player in the hand, but it doesn't matter. He folds, Nick calls, and here's what happens. All right, good luck. One time? Come on. Yeah, oh, One time. Matter of fact, just do the flop and then no, muck the rest of it. <laughs> What do you have? Oh my gosh. Nuts. That's good. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. Oh sorry. Sorry. my gosh. This guy is horrible. 
All right, tough mid-session update for you guys. We are stuck 1500 bucks in an hour. So if we keep this up for the next four hours, we're gonna be down like 6K, but it's not gonna happen. Got it all in with aces against a King High Flush Draw, got scooped, made a light call against Nick, thought he was full of it, he had top boat, and then got it all in against Nick with pocket nines, and he smashed the jack with queen jack suited. So got it in good twice, didn't go our way, it's all good. Uh, just reloaded, we're about to run it up. Shut your mouth, lock in. We've reloaded for 1500 bucks and I'm on Omega Tilt now. So when I look down at eight, 10 of diamonds and there's one limp and it folds over to me in the cutoff, I open to 50 bucks. Nick calls in the small blind, the limper calls and so does the button strato. So we're four ways to an absolutely beautiful flop. It comes king nine, seven, all diamonds. Are you kidding me? We flop a flush with a open ended straight flush draw. What more can you ask for when you're on tilt? and you raise 10-8 pre-flop. Anyways, action checks to me. I bet small for 75 bucks. Just wanna squeeze out some value. The button folds, Nick folds, and under the gun folds. They all fold. On to the next hand. All right, screw it. It's time to go broke, and this hand should for sure do the trick. We look down at ace-king offsuit in middle position. There's a limp for five bucks and a raise from on tilt Eric on my direct right to $20. I have three bets, 80 bucks. Of course, Nick calls in the cutoff, and so does Eric. So we're three ways to a flop against the on tilt. Boys, it comes ace, seven queen, two spades. Eric checks. I bet 85 bucks, which in hindsight is a little too small. This board's wet, and we're multi-way. So I think we should be either sizing way up or check raising at some frequency, but that's not what I did, and Nick decides to put in the call. Eric folds, so we're heads up to a turn. It comes the 10 of diamonds, and I think I make a mistake here when I check. I think there's a ton of hands we're still ahead of, so I think that betting is probably the best move on this turn. Unless, of course, you're playing the check raise, which I was not, not gonna lie to you guys, I was not playing in the check raise. Anyways, Nick checks it back, surprisingly, so we're off to a river. It is another 10, and now we have to bet for value. I bet 225 bucks, and Nick snap calls. Good call, good call. Never been Give me a call. Good call, seriously, though. <laughs> really good call. You're a good player. <laughs> Bro, you want to call everything. Good call. Oh my god. This guy's horrible, I'm telling you. If he doesn't suck out, I'm taking this whole stack. Go play a heads up. Go to the kitty table. Come to the kitty table. All right, we're off tilt now. We won a hand. We're good. In this hand, we look down at Ace Jack of Diamonds in the small blind, and the $20 button straddle is on. Nick limps for 20 bucks from the plus one, and so does the low jack. Action folds to me, and I am not going to be limping. I bump it up to $125, and Nick rips it for $1,400. Okay, the other players fold, and if you think I'm folding, you obviously haven't seen any of my old vlogs. I call, and we're off to a run out, heads up. Here it comes, gentlemen. Good One luck. One time. Once. That's me. Diamond. <sighs> Showdown. <laughs> you want all in. Ace Queen? You're so... Give me the pot. Give me the whole pot. Give me the whole pot. Give me the whole pot. Oh. Give me the whole pot. Give me the whole pot. Give me the whole pot. Thank you, Nick. Bye, Nick. Bye, Nick. Oh, wow, you actually. Oh. Ten. <laughs> you know it's bad when it's your meetup game and you gotta ask your players for some money because they done tore him up. Two, three, four, five, six, 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 six. Get back here quickly, brother. I only have four hands. I need four more. Come on, quickly. We got them, boys. <laughs> After that hand, we are officially up on the session with around $3,200 in front of us. And it looks like this stack is going to keep on growing because we pick up pocket aces. In the cutoff, there's a limp for 10 bucks and then the low jack opens to $40. Time to put in a three bet. I make it 140 bucks. Folds back around to the low jack player and he calls. We're heads up to a flop. It comes queen, ace, three, two hearts. Yeah, that'll work. My opponent checks, and although there are some draws on this board, we block a big one because we have the ace of hearts in our hands, meaning he can't have the nut flush draw, and since we do have that card, there's really no bad turn cards for us. So, all that to say, I check this one back. We are off to a turn. It comes the three of diamonds. Not bad. Now we just have aces full, and now my opponent decides to bet in to me. 
he bets out for $125. And I'm not going to be doing anything here besides just calling and praying he keeps on blasting. I call. We're off to a river. It comes the three of clubs. And obviously, we'll lose the quads now. But if you think about it, it's probably a good card. I mean, any queen has a full house. If he somehow has the case ace, he has a full house. And he's never going to fold. But um, it doesn't even matter. This guy just decides to rip it. For $493, I snap call and he snap mucks. So we're taking down a $1,500 pot. I literally don't even have time to stack my chips before we look down at pocket twos in the plus two. Get it? Pocket twos in the plus two? Anyways, I decide to limp for $10. The low jack limps as well. It folds over to the blinds. They both limp and Eric checks in the $10 strata. We're off to a flop. It comes eight, six, deuce. What is actually going on right now? And back to back hands, we flop sets. Action checks to me. I bet for 30 bucks for value. The low jack and the small blind both call, but the big blind does not. Instead, he raises to $150. Oh my gosh, are we really about to stack players in back-to-back -back hands? It sure looks like it. But I'm just gonna call here and the other players fold. We're heads up to a turn and it sucks. It's a 10 of diamonds, but the big blind slows down and checks. I'm not exactly sure what the best move is here, but I think there's a lot of hands we're still beating that we can get value from, like ace-8, 6-8, 8-10. Um, a lot of two pair hands, a lot of top pair with diamond holding. So I put out a bet for $225 and he just calls. Now the river actually sucks even more than the turn. It's the nine of hearts. So now any seven makes a straight. Thankfully my opponent checks and I don't think we can get called by any worse hands here. So I check it back and he shows jack four of diamonds for a turn flush. So it looks like that river wasn't that bad after all. It actually saved us a lot of money because I was planning on betting almost any river that wasn't another diamond. So yeah, happy to lose basically the minimum there. And the next hand, we pick up king, queen, offsuit in the cutoff, under the gun limps for 10 bucks, and Eric raises in the hijack to $50. I decide to isolate him with a three bet here to 150 bucks. But to my surprise, that's not what happens because the limper cold calls, which means he has a low pocket pair for sure, and so does Eric. So we're going three ways to a flop. Flop comes six, jack six, two hearts. Under the gun checks and Eric donk bets for 55 bucks. And I really suck in these spots. When people donk bet, it's like my brain just completely turns off and I become a calling station and it's no different here. I just call and so does the big blind. We're still three ways to a turn. It comes a six of clubs. So now any six or any jack makes a straight. The big blind checks and now Eric checks. Action's on me now and I don't know why, but I reach for chips and for some reason I put them in the middle. I put $200 worth of chips in the middle. Who knows what I'm trying to represent here? Not even I know. The big blind folds and oh, would you look at that. Eric jams for $2,300 effective. So that play really worked. Um, I fold and we're on to the last hand of the session. In this last hand, we pick up a premium. We look down at King seven off suit. Action folds over to Eric in the small blind. He opens the 30 bucks and I call with this premium in the big blind. And so does the button straddle. So we're three ways to a flop. It comes queen, jack, three, rainbow. Eric checks. I check and the button checks. We're off to a turn. It gives us top pair. It's the king of diamonds. Eric checks again and I decide to play this one a little tricky and check as well. Now the button bets 50 bucks. Eric calls. You can make a case for raising here, but I just have a trash kicker and we still lose to a lot of hands. So I just call. We're off to a river. It's the queen of spades. So now the board has paired. Eric checks for a third time and I'm happy to take my king to showdown. So I check as well, but the button does not. He bets 150 bucks. Eric folds and I think we're just going to be chopping here a lot of times against other kings. So I stick in the call and he mucks. Small pot, but I will take it. It's nice to end off the session with a win. All right, why am I shooting this outro in the blazing heat? I have no idea, but here are the results from that game. Initially, we bought in for 1,500 bucks. That didn't last long, it lasted about 20 minutes. Had to rebuy for 1,500 bucks. Then we ran that up to $4,200. And then we lost every hand for about two hours straight. And we ended up cashing out for 1643. So that's a loss of $1,357, which is just a big fat L that we're gonna have to take, but it's all good. We'll be back. Um, if you find yourself in the Burleson area on a Friday evening uh, in Burleson, Texas, go check out Texas Double Deuce. The On Tilt Boys are having weekly meetup games. And as you guys can see from this video, they are action packed. Um, yeah, that's it for this video. If you made it this far, 
drop a fist or a flex emoji, drop a special emoji to let me know you're rocking with me until the very end and you are a real one. I appreciate you. Until next time, peace.